this stuff? It's like Nurgle in a bottle. <coughs> oh, 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 dear. Great. Now I've got to go get tested. Hi, I'm Amy and welcome to Warp Fiend Studios where chaos reigns. Nurgle is the god of plagues and disease in the chaos pantheon and he's my favourite of the chaos gods. I've been collecting Death God ever since I got back into the hobby in 2015 and even though I've retired some of my older sculpts now for those lovely new 2017 ones, I've still managed to amass a pretty big force. Um, I love painting Nurgle because there's so many opportunities to get extra texture and detail in there to make things look really gross. With that in mind I decided to put together a video with my top seven tips to help you make your Nurgle look more disgusting. Um, while I was doing that however I picked up a pot of Tesseract Glow, the new paint GW's released for doing the glow effects on Necrons. Now, it's a lovely yellowy green and for me that is tailor-made for Nurgle models. So I decided at the same time as I give these tips, I'm going to put it through its paces and show you a few things you can do with it. One of the most identifiable features of Nurgle models is the corrosion. If you really want to step up your Nurgle painting game, then it's important to nail all those rusty blades and those oxidised brass bells. Here are a few methods you can try. This little fellow is Rodney, the sexy Blight King. And as you can see, I've already painted up his axe. I want to add some light rust effects to the blade, so I'm going to water down some Rhinox hide to be very, very thin. You need the paint to be like coloured water. I'm going to glaze this over sections of the blade that I want to be rusted out. After this I come back with some Mournfang Brown and repeat this process being a bit more selective. And finally some Troll Slayer Orange to capture that rich rust colour. Another trick I like to use is this dirty down rust effect paint. They used to distribute this under the name Model Mates with a slightly better formula, but this stuff is pretty useful if you want some really fast rust effects. All I'm doing is just dabbing it over this bit of chain mail here, and if you're lucky, you'll get a lovely combination of greasy dark brown and vibrant textured orange rust. The old version worked a little bit more reliably, but this one can be coaxed by dabbing some water on afterwards to kickstart that reaction that creates the orange. So those are a couple of techniques for looking at rusting armour. So now let's have a look at some verdigris on bronze. The common one is Nylac Oxide from Citadel's technical range. I'm just going to cover all my pre-painted bells with this. I'm going to use a little bit of sponge on a stick, dabbed in fulgurite copper, then squeezed against a paper towel until there's only a little paint coming off. And then dab this against the bells lightly to give them the effect of chipping. Another way you can approach this is similar to the first rust effect I talked about. Simply water some Sotec green way down and glaze it over some sections. On this shoulder pad there's a lot of recesses for the paint to run into and that works great. Uh, when your paint is thinned down this much it will create water lines and that's actually what we want in this situation. Then come back in with some Temple Guard Blue and do some more selective ones and you're done. Where would Nurgle be without these diminutive demons? Since Nurglings are so small, there aren't many tutorials out there for them specifically, but putting in that extra bit of effort on these little cute but stinky critters um, will really kind of sell your whole model. So let's have a look. 
For a bog standard Nurgling scheme that's similar to the Every Metal Teams one, I like to start with Ogren Camo. I then wash it all down with some Bale Tan Green. Then I re-establish that Ogren Camo, leaving just the recesses shaded. Then I highlight it with a 50-50 mix of Ogryn Camo and Screaming Skull. For a flesh coloured one like this sassy boy here, I start by base coating it in Cadian Flesh Tone. I wash him down with Caraberg Crimson. Then I come back in and re-establish that Cadian Flesh Tone. Then a highlight of Kislev Flesh. Okay, so let's try out that Tesseract Glow on a Nurgling. Here's one I primed in Corax White. I'm just going to liberally coat it, making sure nothing's pooling. Looks very fluorescent, so let's bring it down a little with some Beltan Green just dropped into the recesses. Now I highlight all three Nurglings with some Pallid Witch Flesh and paint in the other details. There we go then, that's three different ideas for Nurglings you can try out. This is just scratching the surface of what you can do with these fellows. If you've got a Nurgling scheme that you love, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. If you want to add a little bit extra detail to your Nurgle models, the best place to start is maybe some stippling. Um, you can create some great effects that are like mould or goo on the surface of your armour. Breaks up those flat panels a lot. While this might be a bit too time consuming to do on all of your troops, uh, it can really help to sell those big characters like Mortarion here. First of all, we're going to start with a base coat of Castellan Green. Now we're going to start stippling. Water down some Death Guard Green, very thin, and dab the excess off your brush. Then use a stabbing motion to dot it all over the armour. At this stage we want to cover the armour almost completely, leaving the Castellan Green showing in the recesses and between our brush marks. Try to keep them as random as possible, varying the size and shape and placement. Now that's done, we're going to repeat the process with some Elysian Green, focusing a little more on the higher parts but still covering most of the armour. Now some Ogren Camo and we can start getting a lot more selective with these highlights. Finally a 50-50 mix of Ogren Camo and Screaming Skull, just on the brightest parts of the armour. Now I'm going to take some thinned down Caspian Blue by Scale 75, although you can use Thunderhawk Blue from GW. Uh, I thin it down to a glaze consistency and I wash it into all of the recesses. I also glaze it over the sections of armour I want to be darker. We do this because the blue provides a nice cold shadow colour for the green and though it may look a bit much now, we'll fix it later. Now I take some Rhinox Hide Thin down to a glaze consistency again and just run it into all of those recesses, trying to stay within the Caspian blue. Now I edge highlight the armour with some Screaming Skull. Having done that we have our armour, but the green is a little bit washed out and desaturated. Now that's okay because uh, to make it really rich and vibrant this is where we take some of our Tesseract Glow. We thin it down about one to two with Lamia Medium and we're just going to glaze the whole thing. You can see instantly that it turns into just this fantastic luminous green. I 
don't want to go too deep into things that are straight up weathering techniques rather than just Nurgle techniques but uh, streaking corrosion can really uh, add a bit of extra detail and interest to your armour so I think it's worth covering a couple of methods here. For rust streaks we can use the same colours that we use to rust the surfaces. So these pits in the armour can be filled with some watered down Rhinox hide. Then get your brush point very fine and draw some lines from the bottom where the rust has streaked downwards. Repeat this process with Mournfang Brown. And again with Troll Slayer Orange for a simple dripping rust effect. Say you have black armour like this plague marine here. Orange rust would work just as well, but you could bring in some greens just as easily to look like toxic slime oozing from his armour. So do the same process with Caliban green. Then warpstone glow. And finally moot green for some disgusting looking dripping slime. At a Games Workshop open day a while back, back when events were still a thing, um, I was lucky enough to be able to speak to the person who made the Poxwalker sculpt. Now, uh, um, apologies if he's watching, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he told me that these sculpts were designed to be painted solely with washes, so you could get through a bunch of them fast. Of course, GW now has the contrast line that they're pushing and the style of painting that is basically glazing um, rather than the traditional base shade highlight that they've had for ages. This style of painting is great for creating some really quick gradients so disgusting disease Nurgle flesh it's, it's perfect for. Okay here's Rodney again and as you can see I've already base coated the skin in Rakarth flesh. This is a great colour to use as a base for glazes, although you might find that undiluted contrast paint needs a bit of a brighter base coat. First of all, I'm going to wash it with some Reichland Flesh Shade that I've mixed 50-50 with Lamy and Medium. I'm going to cover most of the flesh, except the tentacle and the hoof leg, which I'll do later. This is to get down our, our basic skin colour that we're going to work and blend on top of. Now we have that but it isn't very bold yet. Uh, we're going to come in with the diluted Reichland flesh shade again but I've also diluted some Athonian camo shade in a similar fashion. I'm going to build up both of those in different places painting the hoof leg in green and blending the colours just uh, using these washes at the same time. Now I dilute some Drucci Violet and some Volopus Pink Contrast Paint, both using just Lardin and Medium. And I'm going to start adding some pinks and purples into that disgusting rotting flesh. Any areas with swelling, uh, they'll look nice and sore. And I also blend the pinks and the purples on the tentacle. Now that's done, we can see there's some lovely colours all over Rodney. To tie it together we're going to edge highlight him with Pallid Witch Flesh. Nurgle Minis are often extremely horny. By which I mean they have a lot of horns. Get your mind out of the gutter. We start off by basing the horn in Rhinox Hide. Then take some Doomball Brown and start filling in from the base of the horn. We want to use these vertical slits for guides, starting to roughly plan where the striations along this horn are going to be. Basically you want a series of lines up the length of the horn don't worry if you overlap at this stage, the trick is to paint smaller lines every time. Paint them up to almost the end of the horn but leaving 
it's just a bit of rhinox hide now we're going to come back in with some scrag brown just trying to keep the lines separate now you want to be leaving more room at the end of the horn trying to keep that gradient smooth next some baylor brown repeating the same process now a shabti bone and by now we're covering only about half of the horn finally we take some screaming skull and just get a little bit around the base That's right, just like Ninja Turtles, I'm giving you the secrets of the ooze. And this is a place where that Tesseract glow will really shine, or at least glisten disgustingly. First off, to make some cool looking toxic pools on our bases, we're going to glue some sand to our base, leaving two roughly circular spots for our toxic pools. I then paint up the base and where the gaps for the pools are I'm going to paint in Incubi Darkness. Now I'm going to flood these two pools with Nurgle's Rot Technical Paint, just a really big dollop in there spread across the surface. After that first coat dries you can still see through it a little so I'm going to do the same thing again. Now, before this dries completely, I'm just going to drop a little tesseract glow into the centre of the pool. Don't worry about mixing it up, it'll naturally diffuse as it dries and leave you with a nasty toxic pool. Next up, how about sculpted drops of slime and ooze that's on models? All you have to do is paint them in Corax white like so. And now I just come back in with the Tesseract Glow and hit each of those. And that's a perfectly acceptable method for painting the slime drops. Finally, when sculpted slime just isn't enough and you want to add your own, here's a great one. Uh, take some of this UHU Uhu Universal Glue and um, mix it with tiny drop of Tesseract Glow. Now the paint reacts, it doesn't want to mix with the glue. Um, it'll form into a little ball inside, so you need to work quick. Just mix it up as much as you can. Um, grab a cocktail wire, or a cocktail stick or a wire or something, and just pull some strands off and just wrap them gently around the mini. Again, this Tesseract Glow looks great for this. It's like Slimer called round. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, maybe picked up a couple of ideas that you hadn't thought of before. This Tesseract Glow stuff, really good, yeah. If you're painting Nurgle, I definitely recommend giving it a go. It's uh, great for creating some really vibrant greens, and that's, that's all you could ask as a servant, as a grandfather. Remember, if you're in the UK, for all your hobby needs, please consider maybe using my Element Games affiliate link down in the description. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. See ya!